Good morning guys, it's Saturday. I've got a couple topics to touch on before we get to work. First and foremost, uh, my wife is on the way down to Darren Land. She is driving with her grandma down to Florida. She headed off this morning into the wild blue yonder out to the east coast and uh, they'll be driving all day today and then all day tomorrow. They should be there sometime late day tomorrow. So they'll be traveling right by you, Darren. I told her to honk and wave. Uh, she's probably not going to stop by. She's, <laughs> she's not very interested in Volkswagens and cars. <laughs> So anyway, second thing is, I have my, as Jesse James would say, my Schmedium shirt on today. It's the FX series. Uh, Darren ran out of the ones for the big boys. He sent me a medium a long time ago, and I decided I'm just going to wear the damn thing. Uh, I look kind of like a bodybuilder today <laughs> with the tight shirt on. Uh, so if you think my shirt's tight, it's not because I'm trying to show off. It's just I want to wear this FX shirt. It's so cool. Fred, thanks for the explanation on the bike. I understand it completely. Um, I have here in my hot little hands, um, this is really cool. My dad was always a poem writer. Uh, always has been, always will be. He just likes to write these cute little poems. And once upon a time, uh, my mom wrote him a poem for Christmas. And my dad's worked for the railroad for I don't know how many years. Since he was 18 years old, he's 68, so figure it out, 50 years. Um, he took a little hiatus, maybe two or three years in there somewhere. So he's got a 40, 45 years or better in with the railroad. And uh, they used to run our lives, and they still run his life a little bit. But I think he's getting a, getting over on him right now. He's uh, he's not retiring. He's, he's stayed on, and he's making money and just doing what he wants to. So one one year, my mom wrote him a Christmas poem about the railroad, and I'm not, and this is it. I just finally got a copy of it. I don't. She didn't have a date written on it, uh, unfortunately. But I'm gonna say this was probably written somewhere around uh, the mid '80s, so '85, '86, '87, somewhere in there. Uh, and I just got off the phone with my brother. Uh, he quoted some of these things that we haven't heard since we were little kids uh, without having seen it. So it was pretty interesting to hear him. But the whole poem is about how the railroad kind of screwed uh, screwed with their employees and, and never really gave them anything in return. And I just want to read the last couple lines because, <laughs> because that's where it gets really funny. Um, it, it, it talks about he worked all night and uh, they were hoping they would get a Christmas gift or a Christmas bonus uh, from the railroad. So uh, it starts in about the postman showing up with a big sack of stuff. And then, uh, let's see, uh, he's getting off work. So when I headed in to tie up my train, I quickly got off and was met with disdain. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a stack of red papers with words so clear, it was letters from the division chief is that all there is? I thought in disbelief. I heard the postman laugh as he revved up the gas. No turkey for you guys, just a goose in the ass. <laughs> Got a package from VW Darren here. Uh, he sent out, I've seen him send a few things. I saw the old dude get a package from him the other day. So we're going to open this guy up. This is kind of a thick one. I heard him talking about Andrea and her postage. can't remember, the old dude got like a price guide and some other stuff, which I think I've got all that already, so I'm not sure what, what this is here. I'm trying to get her open. Hang on. Let's see. There's a catalog of some sort here. Oops. Victoria's Secret. Uh, hmm. Are you and Andrea branching out? You sell, <laughs> selling chunders now? Uh, well, this might, might be all right. Well, uh, okay, that's interesting. And, uh, let's see, oh, check that out. That's the, uh, that's the race bug right there. That's, I think if I remember right, that's a nine-second bug, or is it an eight-second bug? What's it say? Uh, that's a race number on it. Uh, it's a turbo bug. I know it's faster than most of the muscle cars I've ever seen. Uh, that thing will rip down the track, and it's got a hell of a paint job on it, too. So uh, that looks like a sticker. So thanks, Darren. I'll put you up on the YouTube Wall of Fame with that sticker. And uh, just so you guys know, <laughs> the catalog there was a joke.
I put that in the other side. I learned that trick from old dude. <laughs> that was a funny one. I don't know how many of you guys watched the old dude. But uh, anyway, so yeah, Darren didn't send me that. Don't worry about it, guys. Your wife won't freak out. So anyway, uh, thanks, Darren. The other thing I did want to show is I talked to Tom on the phone last night, probably a little too late, but he was asking about my bike. So I figured I'd show the bike. Uh, it's, it, uh, I'm not afraid to show it now. It's not worth anything. It used to be worth a hell of a lot of money. But it's a carbon fiber jobby, and it's built specifically for triathlon. And uh, so you can see the the wheels just have a few spokes on there, and those are those are stainless steel, and they're strong enough to hold up a big fat guy like me, even when you go over uh, over all the bumps. And uh, so there you go. There's the bike. It's like I said, it's carbon fiber, it's got Dura-Ace components, and that's where all the money is, is in the uh, components. The frame of the bike uh, is just a uh, small percentage of the cost of the bike. Uh, the components are probably half to three quarters of the value of the bike, and I bought this one used. I couldn't afford to buy it new. There's no way I could afford to buy it new. Uh, but it had all of the best available components on it so it's a really fun to ride it's a really fast bike and it's built for really tall guys I, I'm not super super tall I'm about 6'1 but the cranks on it are long uh, which you don't see on many bikes but when it's on the flat and you're down in the aero position uh, this thing will just absolutely rip so this bike has been in Ironman Coeur d'Alene which I think is up in Wisconsin and down by you, Darren, Ironman Florida. Uh, I can't focus on it, but it says Ironman Florida. I think they do that one in, uh, not Panama City, but maybe Pensacola. And then Ironman Kansas was me, but it's a half, a 70.3. The, these two were done by the guy uh, who owned the bike before me. Oh, we're back at it again. I have all the wiring back out going through the boxes. I figured out I need to get organized, <clears throat> get my good parts and bad parts separated into separate boxes. Parts I'm going to use, parts that are just maybe spares. I did find grommets. It takes two little grommets and two big grommets uh, for the headlights and I think I've got three of each so I'm picking the best two of each and away we go. So we'll get these wired up or set in, cleaned up set in. Tom was telling me you can glass bead these things. I don't have any glass beads around, uh, but I'm just going to clean them up with some soap and water and see how shiny we can make them. There you go, Tom. 40-year-old uh, German rubber, still awfully squishy, not cracked. As long as it stays out of the UV, this stuff seems to be pretty good. It cleaned up really well with soap and water. But an old trick I've used, uh, I'm sure everybody's got a little bit of this around the house, you guys. Uh, a little bit of Vaseline on there, and I'm talking extremely thin uh, coat of Vaseline. I'll shine these up, so we'll see if that works. I know it also attracts dust. you got to kind of wipe it, wipe it, wipe it again, but uh, I can keep on that. That's all right. I've just got just a, I mean, I just barely stuck my finger on that, so away we go. It also conditions the rubber a little bit, huh? little petroleum in there. Oh yeah. That's nice. So we'll wipe that off clean and uh, this will probably help it get into the groove too. Okay, we've got an 03 Saturn view with a bumper and we're taking a look at the estimate here. It tells us we got a bumper cover that needs to be replaced. Uh, I don't know what a RET rear bumper cover, I'm guessing it's the retainer, uh, so clips and so forth. The absorber and the retainer, so the retainer's on there twice, but I'm guessing these are just clips, uh, different clips that are probably broken. The pad for the rear bumper step, the reflector on the left, which we took a look at, really isn't in bad shape, uh, and then an exhaust repair. I think he got whacked in the exhaust, so there's probably a hanger. So we're going to take this apart. I'm going to video a little bit of it uh, just in case we have any supplemental items we need for the insurance. I just want to make sure that you know they know we're not breaking things as we go. Here we go. We're almost done reconditioning this bumper on a 2003 Saturn View. 
there was no real damage underneath the bumper cover. So my buddy just got a really nice Christmas present from the insurance company because we're going to go up to the store and we're going to buy some replacement clips because I broke a few clips and uh, that's going to be that's going to be the end of this repair in terms of uh, financial disparity so uh, there we go I'm going to melt these little guys together I already got the back melted together real nice and we're going to reinstall this guy here we go, Saturn views all together. There's a little patch job right there. And uh, only wound up breaking four clips, or eight clips. <laughs> so we had to buy a few extras. But uh, that's it on the Saturn. All right, I'll give you a little uh, little heads up on that repair there. Um, <clears throat> I could put this in front of the repair. My buddy got hit in the rear end. Uh, that car's a 2003, so it's almost 10 years old. It's got a ton of miles on it. It's not the prettiest car in the world. Uh, he just wanted me to make sure his bumper underneath hadn't been screwed up. The insurance company settled up with him for about 750 bucks, and uh, they had in there to replace the the actual bumper and all that kind of stuff, the bumper cover and the bumper and something else. And we looked and assessed the damage, all the foam underneath, uh, with one little small spot uh, as the exception. I'm talking a spot about that big. It was all in good shape. Uh, it was all together, all there, no other cracks, and I asked him, I said, do you want to replace that piece? Because your bumper itself, the big metal part, uh, was in good shape. None of the brackets were bent. There was no damage at all under there. Uh, I said, you know, we can get you a bumper cover on eBay or something, or even just go to the parts store and get one. And he, he basically said, if we can weld that thing together, he's not worried about how it looks. So we welded it together, put it all back on, and uh, you know, with the exception of the clips, it's all back in one piece. So he's got to go buy. We we bought the store out of clips. I bought four clips, and that's all they had. So he's going to go buy this next week and uh, get four more clips because that's how many more he needs. And uh, there we go. So 750 bucks minus I think 10 dollars worth of clips. So 740 dollars is what uh, he profited on that little rear ender. <laughs> There's. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, the insurance company was quick to cut him a check, so I said, you know, I'd, I'd go with that. I wouldn't feel bad about that at all. So, anyway, we're going to get uh, flying on the Gia here. I had all my parts out, and then I had to take them all back and put them in piles again because he came over. So we're going to get these all stretched back out again, and I'm hopefully going to get the uh, turn signals installed here working on those and I got my lens in there and I went to the hardware store earlier where the hell did I put that stuff it's over here on the floor now yeah there we go and got some bolts some metric long bolts for the turn signals so we'll get those installed here's a prime example of the hard to find Volkswagen part uh, again I'm not going for concourse on this deal so I'm doing what works this is the original equipment that came off of there. It's a stud with a nut on it. And this is what's going back on. It's just a bolt. I don't know why they did the studs. They did studs everywhere on things. But we're going to put it back together with just straight bolts. We got a little electrical project going here. What, show us how it works, Dad. It's a continuity tester. Continuity tester. We got a battery. And uh, use the old phone clips right here to put the wires together. We got a little buzzer from Radio Shack. And. Uh, yeah, there you go. There we go. There so go. we can hook one end onto one wire and one end on the other end of a wire. Make sure it's continuous. We got about what 10, oh. 10 12 feet there. 12 feet, yeah. So we can stretch from one end of the car to the other and test for continuity on wires that we're wondering about. Yeah. That's looking good. We got the soldering iron here. We're going to do some work. Got a bunch of spade uh, spade terminal terminals to repair things with. We got our two headlights. We tested them earlier. They're both working just fine. Using a little uh, CarQuest battery charger over there to test that. And I'm on uh, soap and water duty cleaning up the old harness for the front end, so we're going to try and get that installed tonight. Okay, guys, we have got our headlight going on one side. We've got all our things soldered back on. I prefer those over the butt connectors. Dad, you want to click the thing in there? 
It's on the steering column on the left, or the, yeah, left side of the steering column. Yep, there we go. So we got our dim, right? Everything's looking good. So we've got uh, the Rube, Rube Goldberg uh, things going on here, trying to get wires from one place to another, and we've got the battery charger going, but we've got headlights. So that means I can put this all together, headlights, turn signals, and so forth. So the front end electrical is pretty close. Uh, we're going to maybe hook the horn up here in a second and see if that works too.